Hello everybody and welcome to the workshop. So what I'm going to do in this series is I'm going to take you through all of the heat presses that we have, the printers and things like that. Um, we're going to cover unboxing them, opening them up, what you get when they land, um, all the way through to um, getting them up and running ready to go. Down the line we're also going to look at any issues that you may have down the line, if, there's any, if you ever need to swap any parts out, it's very rare. but. What we'll do is I'll take you through how to swap them out, we'll do a video of them and video common issues and stuff like that. Which means that it's going to be a lot easier for you guys because we can just send you parts and you'll be able to follow these videos or give us a call and you'll be able to do a lot of the repairs yourself, it saves a lot of time on shipping and stuff like that. But in this video today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of our really popular little presses, we're going to take the 4-in-1 multifunctional press. Um, I've got one just down there behind me in the box as it would arrive to you. I'm gonna get, we're gonna open it up. I'm gonna have a talk through what's in it. We're gonna unbox it, and then I'm gonna take you through how to set it all up and how to change all the all the elements and things like that. All right, guys. So down to the floor. Uh, we're gonna change the camera position because uh, you know I don't want to have to have the cameraman hanging from the ceiling while we uh, unbox it. We're gonna do the actual opening on the floor. So down there, and we'll get going. Right, so there's the box. Um, what you're going to need before you start opening your presses up is there's two things I tend to advise that you have. One is a box cutter or a Stanley knife. That's going to make it a lot easier to get in there. And a Phillips screwdriver. Not all presses need a screwdriver, but it's always worth having one just in case you need to put feet on or such. When we finished recording the video, Sam reminded me that I actually missed something out of the tool section of this video on the what's we're going to need. So he's asked me to do a quick video so you can cut it in where it's relevant because he's competent and I'm not. You're all, what you're going to need is you're going to need some Allen keys, um, namely a number five Allen key. So one of these. Anyway, that's my mistake fixed. Back to the video. So. Right, let's get to it then. So this is how it comes, this is the box. Um, quite heavy, so if you're, if you're on the sort of smaller side, it's always worth getting somebody to give you a hand um, moving these about. But they are taped up, they're, they're really solid boxes actually. So what you want to do first is really gently, I mean don't jam your knife in here, you just want to, just enough to nip the tape, like so. And then there we go. Right, when you open it up, you're going to get a lot of polystyrene. It's got like foam protective stuff to get that out of the way. And then this is what you're going to be presented with. So everything's packed in foam. Uh, the plate presses here. What I tend to advise you to do is take these parts out in the foam. And um, we'll lay these out on the bench in a minute. We'll go through exactly what's in them. But take them out in the foam and that'll just keep them nice and safe and keep them separate. Um, while you're sort of working on the press. So you've got another one here. This one's got the cap element in it. We're gonna put that under there. The mug, the mug press element of this machine is here. We'll get that out. That was a little bit heavier than I thought it was gonna be. And then you've got the press itself. So this will be uh, packaged in with, again, some more foam. This one overlaps the platen and this one overlaps at the back. So you'll see they're quite secure in there. Yeah. So what you're gonna to need to do you need to pull the whole press out, including the two bits of foam. Okay. Now it is always often advisable to have a second pair of hands with you while you do this. It does make it a lot easier. I've done quite a few of these now, so um, I can get this out on my own. But it is advisable to have a second pair of hands. I'll get the screwdriver out of the way so I don't stand on it. Now, when it comes to the presses, I wouldn't advise grabbing it by the handle because that moves. So, you want to grab it by this solid bit of red at the top. Hold your box and just lift straight up. Now you can then rest it on the corner of the box like that. See, keep your hand on it so that it doesn't fall over and then take off your protective polystyrene bits, the foam bits, yeah? Okay, so I'm gonna move this over to the bench. That's everything that's in the box. Oh, no, I'm telling a lie, there is. We'll get that moved over there, like so. And at the bottom, you've got the swing handle as well so i'll lay these out on the bench so we'll have a closer look at them um but yeah that's that's, that's getting it out of the box not too bad to get out this one some of the big ones are a bit heavier but right let's get over to the bench and i'll show you what's in there 
Editor Sam has just asked me to do a little segment to go in here as well because there's something we missed. You will also get one of these in with your 4-in-1 heat press. This has two QR codes on it and some links at the bottom. These two QR codes will take you both to the spec sheet for the press and the user manual as well. So you'll be able to find exactly how to use your press uh, if you follow that link. There we go, as if by magic, everything's on the bench. This is everything that came out of the box, um, as it came out of the box. What you wanna do is before you start trying to assemble stuff, I would unpackage everything and just check it. Uh, make sure it's all okay. Um, there's no obvious signs of big dints and things like that. Very, very rare, I've never seen it yet, but it's just good practice when you're unpackaging machinery. Obviously, the sooner you get to it, you let us know, the sooner we can sort that out for you. The other thing I would say, keep hold of this. Don't immediately bin the box, because, it, again, as you're checking stuff, if there is anything that, uh, that needs sorted or it needs to come back for whatever reason, even during the warranty period, I would recommend keeping the box and the packaging. Just makes it a lot easier to get it back to us if we need to. Although it's unlikely that's going to happen. Right, so what we're going to do is you want to take all your parts, such as the plate press, which is here. Take all of this plastic wrap off. Yeah, so if you get the end, it should just, it's just like shrink wrap. That'll all come off. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to I'm going to unwrap these now, but I'm not going to make you sit through watching me take a load of plastic off a load of machinery parts. We will uh, just keep it running. We'll speed through this. And I'll come back to you once it's all done. All right. Okay. So that's the plastic off everything. Oh, that was one last bit, isn't it? Oh, that's satisfying. Taking the plastic off screens is, is, is so much fun. Right, there we go. So this is everything that's in the box. What we'll do is we'll get a nice little tight in shot. I'll show you what everything is um, of each of them. And then we will put this thing together. Right, so that's everything that's in the box. So we'll go through and we'll talk about what they all are. So this thing in the middle, obviously, is your heat press. It comes with the standard platen fitted. Um, but obviously you can fit the other elements to that and we will cover that later in this video. The other thing you've got is this, it's actually cap press. So that allows you to do the peaks of caps and stuff like that. These all bolt on and are interchangeable with this platen. There's also the plate element. So that lets you do the inside of your plates and things like that. Then you've got this thing, which is the handle. This clamps onto here. Again, we'll take you through how to do that. And that allows you to swing the press nice and easy. And you've got your mug press element there, loaded with a 10, 11 ounce element. Again, it's connects to here, so that you can do a pretty wide variety of stuff with these, to be honest. Right, what we're going to do first, we'll clear these out of the way. We'll get the handle fixed onto here, um, and then I'll show you how to operate this press, and then we'll talk about changing the elements. Right, so first part of setting this up is we need to get the handle onto the press. So to do that, you're going to need the uh, your number five Allen key, so or hex wrench or whatever you want to call them. One of these. I'm going to take these two little screws out. Be careful when you're taking them out because there is a washer, a little split ring and a washer on both of these. And you want to keep those on there. So we're just going to pop those out. This is where he drops them. Now I'm really hoping Sam sped through that because that was embarrassing, but yeah, try not to drop them. It's not always the easiest. There we go. Okay, so we've got two screws there. Now what you want to do is if they do fall apart, you want the split ring to be against the cap head. So the split ring Go on, Sam, get a good zoom in. There we go, that's it. So yeah, I don't know whether you can see that, but you've got cap head, split ring, and then the washer. That's the order that you want those to be in when they go back in. All right. Then we want to get our handle. Get the handle. What I tend to do, little tip, it makes it a lot easier, is to take one of your bolts, like your cap heads, pop it through the hole first, hold it in place with your finger, and line it up with the rear hole, yeah? And then just 
gently turn it until the threads get hold. Yep, that then is going to take the weight of this so you don't have to hold it. And pop your second one in and just adjust it so it's nice and loose and then bring them all the way in. Once you get to a certain depth they will start to stiffen up a bit. Get your wrench out and your allen key. Tighten them up a bit until we can't go much further. And then what you want to do is you just want to take a final quarter turn just to compress that split ring. There we go. And that handle is now nice and solid on there and that's going to let us swing the press about. Okay, with the handle fixed on, we're going to go round. I'm just going to show you some of the bits of the press itself, so I'll tell you what they do. So we'll start here. So this is your control box. This has your time and temperature settings in it, um, and, and you know Fahrenheit and Celsius settings. So that basically controls all of the elements that are plugged into it. Obviously, you can only have one element plugged in at a time, but uh, that works out what temperature your elements are and adjusts it accordingly. You've also got the power switch, so this is your on-off button here on the side, bright orange button on the side, and the port for the kettle lead, power, uh, power lead. That was also included in the box, I just forgot to put it on the table before. That will look like one of these, and they just slot in to the side like that, and then you plug it into the wall. Okay. So that's, that's, your, that's your control box in a nutshell. The other bits on here are this here is the connector for your other elements. Yep, so that's the connector for the other elements. If you're going to use your mug press or whatever, I think. And you have another connector here which is connected to your flat platen. Yep, so there's another connector around the back. Same idea, plug in and a screw on it. And that's what connects the main element to the control box. So if you swap out for any of these flat elements, so any of your plate elements, things like that, they're going to plug in on this side. It's your mug press that will plug in on this side. Okay. Then you've got your uh, pressure adjust, which is at the back here. So right increases the pressure. So clockwise increases the pressure. Anti-clockwise will take the pressure off. It does that by lifting this whole column up on a screw thread inside. Okay, so that lets you do your pressure adjustment. To open the press, you've got your handle here. You lift that up and that will lift the press. Once the press is lifted, you use the handle we've just plugged in to swing it away. Okay. So around the back of the press, there's a couple of, uh, couple of things going on here. So as the press swings, I'm just gonna turn that now. You'll see it's got these plates on here. Yeah, there and there. And they've got these cap head screws running through them, uh, the cap head bolts there. What they, what these bolts do is they act as a dead stop. There's a plate around the back, which is flat and welded to the base. So there you go. It creates a hard stop for the press for the press motion. So this one is set so that that it lines up, sorry, with the bottom platen when it gets to its furthest point. Bang. If I close that, lined up. And then you can obviously adjust the maximum swing there as well. So that we have got that set on its maximum. It is set to 90 degrees, so that is as far as that can go um, when turning around. It just means that if you are finding that when you're bringing the press back around to drop it and it's not lining up with the bottom platen, you can adjust it by turning this one either in or out with a number six Allen key. Now, if you need to move the press, yeah, and you don't want it to be swinging about or whatever even when it's closed and you're trying to move it you do have a knob on the back here what that does if you tighten that down that locks the swing so you can't swing the press with that locked in so if you as I say if you're moving it or you want to lock it for the night so that you know your kids don't play with it or whatever because mine would just take that and lock it down and then turn it out again and that will let you move the press Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to fit the other elements. So 
Right, so the first thing we're going to have a look at how to do is put the plate press on. So that's your plate press there. So to do that and to change any of those, this also applies for the top part of the cap element as well. So, but I will take you through how to sort the cap element out in a minute. So to put the plate element on, there are four knobs on top of this platen, yeah? So what you want to do is you want to just loosen those off. Close it, make sure the press is closed when you do this, by the way. So you want to make sure the press is closed so that this hasn't got anywhere to go. You want to loosen these off. And when you first get this out of the box, they may be a bit tight. So just bear with it. If you are going to use any mechanical assistance to loosen these, pliers, that kind of thing, be very gentle because obviously these knobs are plastic. You don't want to crack them. Yeah, so you'll see that it's actually the, the element is threaded into this plate. You'll be able to see it a bit clearer when once we have taken these off. Oops. So these knobs come off like that. Yeah. So you just want to make sure you don't lose them because you will need those for when you want to put the platen back together. Take those off. So now that those four are off, this platen is completely loose. You'll see there's a a slot for each of those. The easiest thing to do now is just make sure you hold the platen like that and just very gently lift the handle. That'll lift this away and then you can take the platen away as well. Okay, the platen is plugged into a connector like this one under here. So you want to unscrew the collar. And pull it out. Okay, so once that's away, you've got, you'll see on top of your plate platen, there are four corresponding um, threaded bars. They slot back into the same knobs that you've just taken off. Okay, so what I tend to do is I will, you make sure that your power cable is facing backwards, otherwise you're gonna to have to stretch it right round and it's gonna be all over the spot. So make sure that that is stretched out the back of the press and you just want to line up those four threads with the slots in this plate here. Okay, and then you're gonna to want to hold it screw these back onto the threaded bar. What I tend to do is I'll get one on, like so, and then very gently just lower down the um, thing, the handle, and that makes it a lot easier to work on. Because you can rest your hand against there while you're holding the platen on. Don't tighten these all the way up f at first, okay? Right, so once you've got those on, I wasn't going to make you sit and watch me slowly screw all those on. Just be gentle with them initially, initially when you're putting them on, just to make sure they are in the threads so they don't get cross-threaded. Then what I would recommend you do is just drop your pressure down and at this stage. So these are still a little bit sort of loose. I haven't tightened these all the way up yet. Yeah, so drop the pressure down. until the plate platen sits flat against the bottom. Then, because it's still loose, you can do a little bit of adjustment and then tighten it up. The reason I drop these down when I'm putting these on is because that means that as long as you tighten these up at this point, your plate platen is gonna be square to your base platen. Saves a lot of hassle down the line. So tighten these right up until just hand tight, you don't have to go mental, you don't have to, uh, you know, get your pliers out and drag them around, they just need to be hand tight. If you tighten them too far, you're in danger of not being able to get them back off again. Okay, there we go. So then what we'll do is you take the um, connector, it'll have a slot in it which will correspond to the pin on the, uh, the socket on the control board. And then that just gets plugged in like that. And you tighten up the collar. Like so. And then that is ready to go. So that'll swing away as normal. You put your plate under there. 
and you bring that down. Right, so the next thing we're going to want to fit, which is a little bit more complicated, is the cap press element. Okay, so what you do is you do this in reverse, so lower it back down, yep, and you want to loosen these off again. So I'm going to get Sam, our lovely cameraman, to spin through all of this so you don't have to sit and watch me take these knobs out. Yeah. So now that we've got those knobs off, we're just going to lift those up like that and get it out of the way. Undo the connector. Like so and move that away make sure by the way when you put the connector in you do actually tighten up those um the collars so make sure that that collar is tightened onto the thread on the socket it's very important it means it's not going to pop out and it's not going to be loose okay so the cap, i'll just move this out of the way so you can see what i'm doing so your cap element comes in two parts that's the bottom platen so that will replace this and the top platen which replaces obviously the element I've just taken out there. So the first thing to do is to get the cap element in place. So we'll bring this back around. You're going to want to loosen off your pressure as well for this. You want to bring this up quite a way so you've got enough room to work. Some people suggest that you swing this out to change these elements. I don't like to do that purely because if you do drop it, it hasn't got far to fall and it'll land on a soft um, surface which is obviously this if you drop it over there it could fall off your bench and actually get damaged so same as the plate element there are four threaded bars coming out of the top power cable to the back and then just line these threaded bars up with the slots and again I'm just going to drop that down so it's resting now you don't want to tighten this up too much because we are going to change that top with that bottom platen as well. So you want a little bit of play in your cap platen at this stage so that we can make sure later on we can get it lined up. So all I want to do is just screw those down enough. Screw those down enough so that it's not going to fall off but in the same vein, it's not going to be too hard to adjust it in a minute. Plug the element in, like we did with the plate press. Screw the collar down. And then we can lift that out of the way. Right, we're gonna, I'm just gonna get um, Sam to move the camera around just so we can have a look underneath here and I'll show you what needs to happen next. Next step is to remove the lower platen so that we can put the one for the caps on. First thing, take your foam off. It's going to make your life a heck of a lot easier. And then underneath here, there are two of these. You want to loosen those. Now, on the top of the platen, there is um, the other end of this screw thread. So you just want to press your finger down onto it and loosen these two off. Move your thing out of the way and then lift away the bottom plat. You want to keep hold of these um, as they live with your bottom platen. The cap platen comes with its own ones. Just while we're under here, you'll see there are these four black knobs as well. These allow you to loosen them and lets you adjust the uh, forward and back alignment of your base platen. Now, it's unlikely that we'll need to move these, um, but just if you do find that your platen's gone out, if the press has taken a knock at some point, or, or anything like that, this does let you move that back and forward so you can adjust it back to being square with itself. But for now, we're gonna leave those tight, and we're gonna take these off the bottom of the cap platen, and then these two threaded screws go into the two corresponding holes on the top, like so, and we just want to get underneath and reapply these. Okay, so now that they're tightened up again, don't go mental, you don't have to get a spanner on them or anything like that, just make sure they're hand tight, and we'll pull back out and I'll show you how to line it all up. 
Okay, so that is what it should look like when you've got the uh, top and bottom cap elements on there. Best, best thing to do now is just to close it down and then just adjust the top platen as necessary. So remember we didn't tighten these all the way up, give us a little bit of wiggle room. If you have a look on there, the element is not 100% lined up with the base platen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my hand along the front of the bottom platen and then just nudge that element across with these knobs still loose until it lines up flush and then you just wanna tighten it down at that point. So tighten all of these. There we go, so that's all nicely lined up now so that when you bring that down, your element, your bottom pattern sorry, is covered by your element. Brilliant. Okay, on to the mug press. This is your mug press. Uh, pretty basic, there's not a lot you need to know about this. So you've got the frame, this silver bit here is the element, so that's where the mug sits and then you've got the handle to open and close it. There's also four screws on top. These let you swap out these elements um, to do different styles of mug. Then you've got the power connector from your element. So this slots into the same screw socket on the side of the press here that your other elements click into. So you'll know these have all got four pins. So if, when in doubt of which one to actually plug it into, Count the number of pins inside the plug, and that will tell you which one to put in. There we go. It'll only go in one way, and then you want to tighten that collar down again. Um, I know Sammy is going to cut in a little bit of a video up the top while I'm doing that, just to show you exactly how to do that. I know it's a bit hard to see here. Once that's ready to go, your mug press will operate in exactly the same way as the um, main press in terms of times and temperatures and things like that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reassemble this back to um, its sort of factory default settings as it were and I'm going to show you how to use the control panel. So we've been through all of the elements that you can swap out on this thing and how to connect them. Next thing is obviously the most important and that's how do I use the thing. So first thing you're going to want to do is plug it in yeah so we've got the kettle lead here that was in the box what you're going to want to do is pop that into the connector on the side of the control box there it'll only go in one way and then plug this into the wall i'm lucky i've got floor sockets but you plug that into the mains and that's connected please do it in that order don't plug it into the mains and then plug it into the machine it's a lot safer to do it that way around. Then you're going to want to hit the power switch on the side. And it's going to come up with off on the screen here. Just let Sam get adjusted so you can see what we're doing. Yep, so it's going to come up with off on the screen there. This is because we haven't set a time and temperature yet. So to do that, what you're going to want to do is come around. You've got three buttons on the bottom. You've got OK, an up arrow and a down arrow really straightforward control system on these. So you press OK, and that's gonna take, it's gonna come up with a C. So that's telling you that this press is currently set to operate in degrees Celsius. Now we can change that to Fahrenheit if you prefer to work in Fahrenheit, but I'm gonna leave that at C at the moment, so that's Celsius. You press OK again, and what you've got there is the current temperature that the press is set at. So it's saying 180. You'll see there's a little indicator light here You'll come up next to temp and time. Don't worry about CD-L. That is for, um, as an engineering menu in here for calibrating and stuff like that, but you won't need to be in there. Um, so don't worry too much about that. So with the uh, temp light illuminated, that means we are setting the time and the temperature, sorry, that we're gonna want this press to run at. So that's adjusted using the up and down arrow buttons. And then when we're happy with it, we're gonna leave it at 180 for today. Press okay. Then it's going to drop that little indicator light down to the time set, time setting. And that is how long your press cycle is. So this is currently set to run for 30 seconds, but we can adjust that again with the up and down arrows. We'll just leave it there for now. Press OK again. OK, the screen is now going to come up saying low. What that means is that it's started to heat the element up 
but that it hasn't reached the threshold for the thermocoupler that sits inside the element to detect the temperature yet. That's normally going to come in at around about 90 degrees. Okay, so if we let that sit, we'll come back once it's up to temperature and we'll carry on. Right, so we're up to temperature now, so you'll be able to see on the screen uh, there, you should be able to, that we're now sitting at sort of 122, uh, 182 degrees. So there's always a couple of degrees variance on the thermal readout. Well, that's it. So that's the press now, ready to use and good to go. You'll find that the timer will start to count down once you close the press. You can see it's now counting down about 30 seconds that we set earlier. It'll beep when it's finished. And then you just lift that up again and get it out of the way. But that's it, guys. So that is, I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll knock that off. That is how you set up, unbox and set up one of these multifunctional presses and how you change out all the elements on them. Hope you found it useful. Stick with the channel. We're going to have loads more in the workshop series um, as we go through all of the heat presses and machinery that we sell here at uh, Dye Sublimation Supplies. All right, guys, have a great day and uh, take it easy.